Hello, my name is Dr. Edwin Lee, and uh, we're here at the um, 2018 AMMG meeting, the Age Medicine, Age Management Medicine Group in uh, Orlando, Florida, at the Omni Hotel. And today is my privilege uh, to actually speak to one of my good friends, Dr. Uh, Kathleen O'Neill Smith, who is a former Olympian and an amazing uh, physician. And uh, she is a, um, I think I consider a, a thought leader and a pioneer in her works. And uh, can you tell us what you presented today? Oh, today I presented on uh, the microbiome and its relationship to the brain uh, and how understanding the, the bugs, the microbes that live within our gut and in our ecosystem is really important for brain health, including anxiety, depression, mood disorders, uh, autism spectrum disorders, Parkinson's, etc., dementia. Yeah, it's a hot topic, uh, the microbiome. Um, uh, there's um, more and more papers being published out there. Is there anything you're doing in your practice to check for the um, any deficiencies in the microbiome or lab yes. works? It's an emerging science. It's absolutely emerging. We're, I think, relatively in, in the infancy with respect to understanding the microbiome, but we do know that it's, it's very involved in every aspect of our well-being. And so, thus, it's also involved in our sickness. And so we need to be looking at that. So I'm using lab testing, um, particularly from a whole variety of companies to look at dysbiosis, the different microbes that live within the gut and their relative balance within the gut, how uh, digestive processes are occurring and uh, how the immune system is functioning because all of those things are related to the gut. So the people that you're testing for, for their microbiome in your practice, how many people have some issues? Or have you found that everyone has an issue with their microbiome? I think everyone has an issue, given the standard American diet. However, the relative nature of that and the relative symptoms associated with the microbiome are very different from person to person. And so it's a really individualized uh, you know, situation, and I think it makes sense to, to look at the patient, to treat the patient, to look at the data to see if the data correlates with the patient's symptoms, but I practice patient-centered care, and so it really is about what the patient's experiencing as opposed to what a lab test is showing us. So unfortunately, I missed your lecture, and I missed it uh, last time because of this planning committee uh, commitment that I have to go to, but uh, could you kind of give, you, give us three major points on your talk um, that you talked about today? Sure, sure. I think that um, one of the biggest things about the microbiome is to understand whether it's balanced or not, yin and yang, are there how many beneficial bacteria are there versus other bacteria that may not be pathogenic. So looking at that aspect of the, of the, for the person. Secondarily, looking at whether or not there's leaky gut, whether or not there's intestinal permeability, which can be readily measured through lab testing, mm -hmm. by looking at anti-actin, anti-LPS, anti-zonulin. Um, and then lastly, uh, the third thing would be understanding the food component and whether there are food antigens that are non-self that can cross through the gut barrier into the body and pose a problem not just locally in the submucosa of the GI tract, but more distally in the brain. Because that can happen within minutes or seconds of eating a food that, uh, that the body sees as foreign. Since this is not a CME talk, you can yeah. feel free in terms of talking mm -hmm. about what companies you may use. But, sure, sure. Um, is there a company that you actually like to use uh, to check for food sensitivity? Mm -hmm. There's a variety of companies, but one of the companies that I really, really like presently is called Cyrex, and they're located in California, and they do some really good testing, and they have a lot of good science behind uh, what can cross through the, submuco through the GI tract into the submucosa and create some of these localized GI problems, but in addition will translate into the CNS and cause leakiness of the blood-brain barrier and disrupt the central nervous system. Yeah. Yeah, I've used uh, Cyrex um, array number, I guess, three for intestinal hyperpermeability. 
Uh, but I wasn't quite aware um, they had a food sensitivity. Uh, yes, they, they have did. a food sensitivity. Okay. And, you know, beyond gluten, because gluten is very well sure. known, and, and many, many uh, clinicians, whether the conventional or unconventional, less conventional alternative, they'll all test for gluten sensitivity, and they'll measure from the genome level all the way through the antibody level. But I think what I like about a company like Cyrex or, and some of the other companies that test this, they'll measure for lectin, and lectin is another protein component of wheat, wheat germ or glutenin, that can even be more serious. And I think the reason to understand um, what, what peptides are being presented to the inflammatory system and how they're affecting it is because they have a significant uh, relationship with autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. And we know that autoimmune diseases start 10 years before we can diagnose them. But if we can, we can like stem the tide with auto, you know, with these antibodies and really calm down the immune system and support the immune system by removing some of these uh, non-self antigens, then we can really reduce the incidence of autoimmune disease, including type 1 diabetes, including room, room, uh, rheumatologic diseases, et cetera. So really, really, really important. Some of the Crohn's and colitis and all of these diseases are that are autoimmune based. So you're probably just like me. Um, you go so you do a lot of training in uh, functional medicine and it's hard work, but it's very rewarding. Uh, I imagine you, you get excited to go to work and, and look for, to, to, help, to help others, right? Well, I am just like you. I do work hard. I do all of the training. I, I, I think that right now with all, with artificial intelligence and with all of the technology that we have, IBM Watson, et cetera, I think that uh, it's amazing how much we still need to learn. And I think that the learning is never done. Deepak Chopra says that learning keeps your mind fresh and keeps you alive longer. And I am definitely on a, on a journey of just expanding my knowledge base so that I can help people in new ways all the time. I love my job. I love going to work. I couldn't be happier. So um, have you had experience with using uh, Dr. Zachary Bush's product, uh, Restore, uh, uh, to help with healing leaky gut? Mm -hmm. uh, he has data that shows that in face of glyphosate or Roundup, uh, you, he can, with that product he has, it actually heal, heals the gut. I have. I've used, I've used Dr. Bush's products. I've used many products. And I think that every body is unique. Mm -hmm. And so Restore works for many people, but it doesn't work for all of my clients. So I will use, you know, I'll just titrate slowly with a variety of things. I usually do my treatment protocols in phases. You know, so I might start with something very basic, make sure that nutritionally they're balanced and that they don't have nutritional deficiencies. And then I might start with something a little bit more uh, advanced, like, a, like the Restore product. And then I may go to a, a peptide, like a BPC-157. So uh, it depends on the patient and the nature of how their response is going. But I try to keep it as simple as possible initially and then build from there depending upon their response rate. Well, in regards to reducing inflammation, um do you have experience with using the peptide BPC-157 more uh, subcutaneously or by mouth or...? I've used BPC-157 both sub-Q and orally okay. um, because some of the studies suggest that using it orally through the gut, particularly for Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or some of the inflammatory bowel diseases can be good. And I've used it that way in many patients. And sometimes I do combinations in those patients. And I use it as maintenance therapy with time on and time off, usually in three-week cycles, um, with tremendous benefit, tremendous benefit. And one of the cases that I presented uh, that in, the, in the talk yeah, that you missed was uh, a woman who had significant uh, infectious gastroenteritis. And she had been scoped and she had been treated with uh, antibiotics without benefit. She then developed C. diff after the antibiotics. They treated her with Vanco without benefit. And when I saw her, it was six months later, and she was wondering, should I have a fecal, mi fecal microbiota transplant? And so I recommended basically just calming down the gut, quieting the gut. We did basic immune support with colostrum, and, uh, probiotic support with VSL, could use Megaspore, could use any of those. Um, and we used BPC because she had anti-actin antibodies and she had anti-zonulin antibodies. And so from that day forward, 
even though she had nocturnal stooling and excessive stooling, like 50 bowel movements a day, she essentially was better from that day forward with that type of a treatment protocol. So she's still doing um, a little bit of BPC. It's only been several months you know, it's on the order of weeks. And so she'll probably finish up on, on that course. But I think that we'll use that to restore those tight junctions in the leaky gut. Have you ever used a combination with thymosin alpha-1, uh, which is, I know you're a pro at, with <laughs> BPC-157 in patients with uh, like inflammatory gut issues? I haven't really used thymosin alpha-1 for inflammatory gut issues. I think of thymosin alpha-1 really, uh, to be really effective with respect to viruses, influenza, EBV, HIV, and uh, as an immune modulator when the... Um, the viruses are invading. So I have used them together, um, not necessarily for the same thing, but you can certainly use them together. And we use such low doses that I'm not really concerned about any uh, side effects or adverse drug effects or anything like that, and I've had great success. Again, mostly using them in, in small bursts for small, short courses. Well, I think we're going to be presenting in 2018 in Tucson in November I um, think uh, first or second, which it'll be a Thursday on peptides, and we'll have a whole day, and we'll we can looking forward to uh, working with you and um, giving some great presentations. Okay, great, thank so, you. Yeah, thank you for uh, coming. Thank you.